You do good stuff, but man, that's just bizarre. All these daughter boards, it's crazy. Hey everyone, this is an HP Elite Book 8560P, and this is the back plate that comes off with this latch. Now, we have an interesting problem here. See this touchpad assembly that I just received? Yeah, the touchpad on this computer doesn't work. It's, it's pretty messed up. The touchpad works, but the buttons don't work. So we have to replace the buttons on this thing. And unfortunately, disassembling this thing to get to the buttons is a bit of a nightmare. So I've already removed all of the Phillips head screws that can be removed from the bottom, at least the ones that I was able to find, because this thing is really unpleasant to take apart. Um, this one holds in the optical drive, and there's a little tab that you'll see beside it that you can just kind of pry out. There are three screws underneath the optical drive that require a number zero Phillips to take out, which is annoying because I like to use my number one Phillips for everything if I can, but it takes a number zero. Under the hard drive, there are two screws there, Phillips head as well. Um, there are several that hold the keyboard in that are marked with a little keyboard logo and apparently are spring-loaded so that they never fall back out. So I've taken several of these out. In fact, um, if I was to go in here and try to take this one out, well, it's already up. So now the problem is that we can't get this palm rest assembly loose without also taking out all of these stinking torxes. And of course that necessitates pulling out a different tool kit with a funny looking flexible extension um, that I'm not going to use. But yeah, pulling out a different tool kit that doesn't cooperate and you stay there and don't pop out. What size Torx is it? That This is the game that we play. What size Torx is it? It is a T8. So we have to yank a bunch of T8s out. It's like the evolution of the Terminator down here. Oh, and those screws are different from the other screws, so you know. Ah, and this isn't magnetized, so I'm going to magnetize this bit real fast with a hard drive magnet. Oop, okay. And keep those torques separate. Oh look, it literally says T8 right there. So I, I could have just read the thing where the screw literally says T8. Oh, and they're different lengths. The T8 screws are different lengths. So, you know, we're getting kind of screwed here. So you'll have to also keep them in an order of some sort in order to not screw up. <clears throat> Let's find more torxes. There's torxes on the corner. There are torxes everywhere, apparently. This is this is just a little bit frustrating, not gonna lie. It's actually looking like the only torx that was short was this one. But we'll see. Um, one of the things that I'm worried about is that we'll find more torxes hidden underneath things. That's where things will get a little dicey. So I took all the torxes out down here. Where are you hiding? I see a possible screw there that could be making a mess, but see, this is this is the problem with these machines. Um, to be quite frank, I've never taken one of these apart, so I'm not a hundred percent sure uh, what screws actually legitimately go all the way through and hold the top plate in versus what screws don't. And the only way to really find that out is to just start taking stuff apart and see if it goes through or not. So does the CPU fan, which the screws appear to also have retention rings of some sort, does the CPU fan hold itself in using these screws? Well, the heat sink is stuck, so I can't seem to get that out either. What do we do? Take it all out. Take it all out. Uh, let's see, a dumb comment? Let me ask you, what are you so angry about? Ah, you see, I have other videos where I argue about dumb political things. 
And, um, this guy just isn't letting up. Unfortunately, his responses are just not very fun. So I don't think I can do an episode of Don't Read the Comments in the future about it, because it's just... He's not very interesting. Um, quite boring, in fact. Oh, this is this is rough. There you go. That was pretty difficult to get out. I'm I'm kind of surprised at how hard it was. And that that computer needs the heat sink blasted out pretty aggressively. That's a lot of nasty stuff. So we'll deal with that a little later. Those flimsy CPU fan connectors that be easy to break. Getting that back in will be a small nightmare. Oh, look, it, it did in fact go into the frame, so we may be disassembling even more than I was planning to. Oh, that is so unfortunate. Well, let's keep looking for screws because it's like a giant Easter egg hunt here. Um, surprisingly, I don't think there are any more. Getting the heatsink out and getting the screws in the battery compartment, CD drive, these torxes on the front. Why are there only torxes on the front? The ones are hiding under the hard drive, the ones going through the CPU fan. Uh, there may not be any more. Let's just hope that there aren't. Let's pretend like there aren't, okay? Let, let's just pretend like there are not. And click. And what do you got here? Are there any here? Pop this touchpad cable. Now that I'm thinking about it, how does this cable, how do these buttons attach? I do wonder. Oh, this is um, unpleasant. So, next question. Next question, does just this piece here come off or does the side trim come off with it? It kind of looks like there's a seam right here, but I can't get a pry tool into it. So I'm going to go ahead and take this USB device out. And it looks like it's going to be ha <laughs> it's going to be the hard way today. Okay. Oh, great. Getting this apart is a nightmare. We're just gonna start prying edges and see what pops loose. Oh, this is rough. So how do those buttons attach? We never did figure that out. Here's another good question. Is there something hiding under these feet? Oh, I see something. Look at this. Look at this corner here. Look, look, there's rubber plugs hiding more screws, and there's screws on the back, too. I knew this was going to be fun. And I'm, I'm glad I can share this with you. Dear viewer, I'm so happy to share this with you. Oh, this rubber plug does not want to come out. Ah, that was stuck hard. Ah, there's one here that does not want to come out. It is also stuck quite nicely. Oh, there it goes. Ah, I guess what kind of screws under those? More torxes in the corners. Yep, it looks like they are the same length. All right, what about the back side here? Let's talk about this back side here. There are four screws on the back in the hinge area. So yeah, we weren't gonna get this open easily, no matter what we did. The serial port has been mangled. That's an interesting development. So exactly how far out can this screw possibly go? Come on. What is going on here? Wow, that that took a while to get out. Two more over here. On the back end. I'm not enjoying this. I don't enjoy doing this. This this kind of disassembly, these these older computers that have tons and tons of screws, where the disassembly is all complicated and difficult and just excessive for all the wrong reasons, it's just difficult. Now, 
I wouldn't put it past them to hide some screws under the feet. That foot is particularly hard to get out, so I'm just going to assume that they didn't. But, what can we do here? Are the hinges loose now? What's going on? Uh, we are getting some separation, it looks like. Over here near the modem port, I see a seam. Oh, look at that. <laughs> also, computer with a dial-up modem. Yeah, like if you enjoy dial-up. I don't. Never did. Cable internet was awesome, and my worst nightmares have been confirmed. So, yeah, this is one of those computers. Oof. Uh-oh. It's one of those computers where the bottom comes up and everything's attached to the keyboard area. You have to pop the uh, speakers here to get them up without destroying them. Oh uh, yeah, that means that the Wi-Fi stuff's gonna have to come loose too. All this Wi-Fi stuff is gonna have to come out. This unused cellular junk here come out. Come out. Oh, man. Yeah, getting all that back in is going to be terrible, too. Why, why, why? Yeah, this laptop harkens back to the bad old days when it was way, way, way too difficult to take a laptop apart and put it back together. A lot of things have changed. This is a prime example of the kind of laptop that made me hate taking these things apart. So much can go wrong and often does. And look, I'm getting all these wireless cables out of here. This design is so bad. It, it's no wonder all these old laptops are so chunky. Because they had to shovel all this stuff in here. They had all these bad decisions as far as how they framed them out. Newer computers are surprisingly vastly simpler. And I get that this thing is supposed to be a professional level computer and all that, but that's really no excuse for making it so difficult. See, if anything, I would think that a professional computer should be designed such that it's more easily repaired by IT people. But this, this thing is complicated. It is unnecessarily, greatly overcomplicated. Yeah, the CMOS battery is going to have to come out too, it looks like. Or at least the connector will. The battery goes with the bottom cover. So, we'll see. Now, I popped these things and it looks like they didn't stay popped or they're stuck on something. Is there a screw under that? No, that's plastic. You know, the truly sad thing about this is that I actually generally like these computers. As long as I don't have to do this to them. Um, I like them. But, see, the problem here is that I have to do this to this one. So, I no longer like this computer. What can I say? I am I am fickle. Uh, I don't I don't get it. It's actually still stuck on something, but I don't see any screws over there. Sometimes you just have to pull and see what breaks. No, um, I was kidding about that last part. Don't don't pull and see what breaks. That's that's not actually a thing that you should do. The battery latch. How is it possible that the battery latch was holding this down? I mean, I've seen some stuff, dude. I have seen some really wacky stuff. But the battery latch holding it down? Oh look, this dial-up modem here has a dial-up modem cable plugged into it that I may not plug back into it. Um, and that I'll be lucky if I can get out in the first place, apparently. Uh, wow, who put that there? That was dumb. Yep, look at all these wireless, wireless wires. I hate saying stuff like that. Oh, this is, this is, <laughs> this is special. 
This is special. Oh, man. What have I gotten myself into? Oh, look. Those are torxes. They're all torxes. They're all torxes. Like, this... The whole thing is assembled with torxes. Like, if you ever wanted confirmation that they just don't like you, these torxes should provide that confirmation. The people who made this computer hate you. Proof. Torxes. So there's a daughter board here in the back corner where the serial port, the mangled serial port, is located. Lift it straight up and look at that not come out nicely. Now, we really just need to disconnect it because the motherboard needs to come out just to get to the touchpad from the bottom. Oh boy. So there's a big fat chunky cable here. Pull it up. Oh, yeah, there we go. Pull up this cable. Oh look, there's a wire under that too. This computer may never go back together properly. We'll see, we'll see. We will see. I am afraid that there is a screw under the RAM. I actually feel something holding it. I am afraid there is a screw under the RAM. There is not a screw under the RAM. Yeah. There is a screw over here. All right. Where else can we find one of these disastrous boogers? There's one here. There's one hiding under this wire because, you know, they don't like you. Why would they make it easy on you? Oh, look, there's a grounding strap there. That's great. You just hold that screw for me. I'll get this one by the VGA port. And, uh, let's see what else we can do here. I sure hope that microphone wasn't too far away and that you were able to... Okay, so whatever was stuck is no longer stuck. And the customer spilled coffee or something into this. So that probably did not help the ease of disassembly. Now, one of the things that's bugging me is I feel like there's something still stuck. Ah, oh, there is something still stuck. Oh, that is sinister. What did I miss? Let's find out. There's actually a wire right here, probably for the power jack, that you can take out from the top but I now have to take out from the bottom. Yep. There's our motherboard. Ah, and now, now that we've taken all these torxes out, here's our touchpad assembly. Right here. The one that we need to replace, and there's four Phillips head screws, because, you know, put a bunch of torxes in the stupid thing to keep people out. But then use Phillips head screws just so that they have to keep changing their tools. Because why not? Because that, that just makes sense, right? That just, that's what sane people do when they put this stuff together. It is incredibly flexible now, as well. Let's see. Four screws out. Uh, looks like it's supposed to lift over here. I'm not getting it up, though. It's actually retained by a tab here, but also by tabs here. So, does it have to slide to come out? Hmm. This could be a bit of an issue. See, it, it almost looks like it has to slide in a direction or be bent to come out. This tab here does not have any retainer. But the ones beside it do. This thing here, yeah, see, I think we have to bend it to get it out. That's not fun. That's not fun at all. There's tabs here holding it, and that's just really unpleasant. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Well, I'm a little bit stumped because if it's retained by tabs on both sides here, it doesn't really have a clear way to take it all out. actually not entirely sure what to do at this point which is most unfortunate because this thing has to be fixed 
but I don't want to break anything. So let's open the new part. Now, I say new, but it's just new to me. Let us take this apart. Ah, oh, look, they included four screws. I don't know why. Let's find out how this touchpad mess is actually assembled. So we have, ignoring those screws, we have an actual pad here. So this is the pad. The buttons are part of this frame. Uh, wait, that's weird. Yep, yeah, okay. There we go. So the buttons are part of the frame. And I am left wondering how they got this out. They had to have gotten it out somehow. Did they have to flex the plastic? I bet they did. This actually looks like they probably had to flex the plastic to get it out. Which is really bad because that means it'll have to be flexed to get it back in. Ah, that's exactly what they did. That or they did what I just did where I broke the tabs. The retention tabs are broken. I don't care. You know why I don't care? Because the thing already has four screws holding it in. It really doesn't need those tabs. At least not on one side. All right. So this is our bad unit. And where did our good unit go? What am I doing? This is the bad unit. Ooh. Ooh, and it's stuck. It's literally stuck. All right. Come on out. If we're gonna replace one, we may as well replace the other. This feels like it has adhesive holding it in. So, um, for this, this is the bad button. I'm gonna take the cable off. I probably could get it out some other way, but it feels like it's got adhesive, so I'm actually gonna use a little bit of heat. Yeah. Warm it up a bit. See if I can get the adhesive to loosen. It has to use some kind of adhesive. Don't want to get it too hot because it will melt the plastic. Quite literally melt the plastic. Or damage the screen or something similar. Oof. Yeah, that, that's adhesive in there. Yep. It'll come up in just a second. Let's go ahead and pull it. Yep. All right. All right, adhesive. You're gone. Ew. Ugh. Dog hair. So much dog hair. Oh, man, that's gross. All right. It's one tab on one side, two tabs on the other side. So it definitely goes in this way. Come on. new buttons which go in this way and let's get the cable fed the cable is hungry the cable must be fed all right I remember these screws that I was talking about they're going to go back in shocking I know but uh, funny enough, the way that this is set up, this metal frame is going to hold the touchpad in place. That's so bizarre. Why would it do that? One can only imagine. Hmm. Yeah, that feels like it'll be quite secure. So those tabs, you know, break them. Whatever. Don't think you have much of a choice. I also just realized there is a daughter board here that has no screws holding it to the system. That is, that is, that is very annoying. Please don't design things like that. Seriously, people. 
You engineers, ho oh, oh, ho, you engineers. You do good stuff, but man, that's just bizarre. All these daughter boards, it's crazy. Well, we have the new touchpad in. We need to attach the buttons to the actual pad part. Use something to get this up and in and back down. Come on, come on. I permit you to go in there. It is allowed. Yep, it needs to feed up near to that white line, but it's not doing that because why not? Oh, come on. Get in there. Get in there. What's wrong with you? Jeez. Be nice, be nice. Okay. This, this connector is, is just incredibly stubborn. I'm actually starting to think that it doesn't go as far in as I think it should. But I have been fooled by connectors like this in the past. Oh, yeah, I'm going to guess it just doesn't go in quite as far as I thought. Yeah, because it isn't. So That's pretty strong evidence, isn't it? How do you know that it doesn't go in that far? Because it's not going in that far. All right. So back to our motherboard. We have this wonky thing over here that has to go back. We have, um, let's see, the touchpad thing is fine. That daughter board, it looks like you just push down to make it work. That's what was sticking earlier, actually, is that daughter board connector. Now, what do we have? Um, this may be difficult to put back. Uh, yeah, so rather than try to do it through the hole, I'm going to put this connector back using my fingers with the board lifted in the air this way. And that went well. That probably was a lot easier than trying to shovel it through that stupid hole. All right, these these various connectors have to fall back through. This thing has a card slot cover. Doesn't need to go there. Let's put this here. Come on, buddy. There you go. One set of connectors, another set of connectors. Got those are all through. And now we can snap the daughter board back in place. The one that has no screws in particular holding it down, of course. Because why not? Right. Oh, the pain and suffering is just unbearable. Let's get this daughter board put back in place. Uh, more torxes to put back. Gotta love it. We can get this card slot cover back in the hole. We can, uh, let's see here. What's next? I think this cord here should go next. Maybe. That grounding strap is going to complicate things. How frustrating. So there's, there's nothing attaching this right now, actually. Yeah, this is... Um, hmm. This is not attached. Oh. You know, that seems like a bit of a problem. Um, yeah, this hinge anchor is broken, so this is going <laughs> to... I have lost my little sticky notes. I have no idea where they are. No idea. But, um, that's okay. This is now an epoxy job. Not a very big one, admittedly, but an epoxy job nonetheless. So let's do it. Little tiny bit of epoxy, because it's a little tiny spot that we need to fill. Epoxy application thing here. 
mean, I kind of don't really care that much how well I put it together. It just needs to sort of be there. And I'm just going to do this handheld. Mix it up. Mix what little there is up. There's so little of this stuff, man. It just thins out pretty bad, actually. There we go. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that was, uh, that was pretty rough. That looks quite nasty, in fact. That, uh, that whole hinge anchor just sort of disintegrated and is gone. So, we need to get it put back together as best as possible. Which is unfortunate because it also means that this job will not be done right away. It will have to wait to cure. Ah. There you go. Okay. Goody. Now, where did the screw go? <sighs> I have no idea. I have no idea where that screw went. Is this it? I don't know. I don't know, but I'm going to try. I'm going to try to put this grounding strap back in place. And I know you can't see what I'm doing. That's just gonna have to be okay. Oh man. Very frustrating setup here. Very, very frustrating. It's um it's like threading a needle. It sucks. <laughs> what were you expecting some sort of philosophical nonsense? It just it just sucks. This sucks. Right here, this sucks. Trying to get this reassembled is not going so well for me. All right, this screw, the other thing is, it's possible that I grabbed the wrong screw, so nope. Went right through that time, of course, that time and that time only. Also, it's a Torx, so I am definitely not doing the right thing. There we go. There we go, there we go, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And then this cable, Clips through here, goes in here, that's your display cable actually. And we're done with that. Let's get to putting some of these torxes back in place, just in general. Uh, what do we have here? These are Phillips heads, these are not torxes. There's tons of torxes over here. One went here. That actually feels like it's too long. Uh, yeah, that's too long. That's not gonna work. So watch out for that. These motherboard torxes are shorter. Everywhere you see a little white arrow pointing at the copper ring, that's where you need to put one of these teensy teensy torxes. It's like a hungry hungry hippo, except it's a teensy teensy torx. So I had gotten one here. Are there any other torxes that I just uh, have overlooked at this point? Well, there are three that go here, but they are of the longer variety. 2.5 by 4. Yeah, I'm fairly sure these are the long ones. Quite a few of these long ones as well. No fun. I've been doing this for a while, haven't I? In fact, I wonder how long have it, has this recording been going? Uh, this isn't too bad. 38 minutes so far on the recording. Now the edit might be uh, a little bit different, <clears throat> but the recording will not be. 
Okay, did I miss one anywhere? Yep, I did. No, that one I took out later. Earlier. I don't know, I just think. Um, let's see, let's see. So, all that's reassembled. That's gross. So if we put this back, what matches up and what doesn't? First of all, that modem thing has to go back. That's frustrating. The heat sink goes in later. See, this is the other problem with these. You have to reassemble them. In order to reassemble, You know, it just occurred to me that now I think I know what uh, was making all that rattle noise inside the computer earlier. Okay, so I'm pretty sure we've gotten all of these put back. I'm going to need to blow that out before I put it back in. So, to reassemble this, first of all, these wires have kind of come out of the carrier, which makes this a lot more complicated. To be completely honest, I am considering cutting the wires that go to the cellular modem that isn't present anyway, just because then I don't have to run them. And that sounds pretty cool to me. Don't know about you, but boy, that sounds, uh, that sounds pretty great to me, not having to deal with that stinking cellular modem. So all these wires came up through this one narrow little hole it's so much easier to bring them out than it is to put them all back through. Oh, come on. Just go through the hole. You know, just go through the hole. There we are. All right. You know, I, st I just realized I still never really quite figured out how those buttons attached. Oh, I bet they're uh, part of that daughter board assembly or something. Well, anyway, I'm not going to worry too much about that. So, one of the... Ooh, I got epoxied, boy. I got epoxied. Okay. Yep. All right, let's... Uh, this dial-up modem cable. Very frustrating. See if it'll go back. It may not go back without taking the actual modem out. And frankly, I don't want to do it because I know for a fact this guy doesn't use it. And uh, I also may have just dropped the screw to the modem. And uh, so therefore, since he doesn't use it, I'm just going to leave that out because I don't feel like dealing with it. And he will never use it. This computer will never fall into the hands of anyone that will use it for dial-up ever again. So we'll just leave the dial-up modem out. Just one more thing to break, right? <sighs> How frustrating. That does mean that I don't have to put the stinking modem back in, which makes me feel pretty good. There's just the notion of not having to put that modem back. <clears throat> There's something magical about not having to deal with that. Yeah, I need this to go back down over that. Mm. We may have to do this the opposite way. Come on. Get those corners down. Ooh. Hello. Mm. Get down. Get down with your bad self. The fact that the hinge was broken kind of complicates things here. So it looks like we need to get over the serial port before anything else, then cover this hinge here. So over the serial port first, then cover this hinge, then bring the rest down, and it all kind of falls into place. Rather nicely, actually. Okay. 
Let's not forget to put the CMOS battery back where it belongs. Come on. Mm. The connector is so tiny for this. It's astonishing if I can get anything There we go. Okay. I don't remember the order that these wires took, but I do remember that some of them were not in the order that I would have expected. Um, to get them all to go in flat is going to be a chore. I think. So let's see and what we can do about this. We keep them all in a row, and we just slide that row under the tabs. Will we get cabling Nirvana? Probably not. Because that's not the way my life works. I am in a constant struggle with the wires. The wires are not my friend. The wires do not care about me. Now how did they even do this? Like. Seriously, did they slide the wires into this one first and then into that one? Is that how they did it at the factory? And then the middle one just sort of has to kind of limp in there somehow? Or what? What happened with that? Who knows? Who cares? That's kind of what it looks like. Yeah, they really, uh... But they really put a lot of effort into making this frustrating and stupid, didn't they? Oh, they. They at, they at HP. Hot Pocket. Whatever. Frankly, Hot Pockets are a little more tolerable than what I'm dealing with right now. In fact, Hot Pockets are tasty. I haven't had a Hot Pocket in... God, probably a year. I haven't had a Hot Pocket ever since I, uh no longer owned a microwave due to various personal circumstances involving said microwave and then never got another microwave so I've not had a microwave with which to heat up a hot pocket so I simply have not had a hot pocket in quite some time I may have to give up my nerd card due to my lack of hot pocket um, on the bright side, I don't think the Hot Pockets were improving my butt size, if you get my drift. So, there is that. See, look at all this time I'm wasting here with these wires. I, what if I just had not with these wires? What if I just didn't? What if I just didn't deal with these? Like, just didn't do them at all? What would happen then, huh? And that's my problem, is that I'm looking at this going, what if I just didn't bother with these stinking wires? You know, I'm going to thread these wires up to a peripheral that doesn't exist in the computer. Like, just like with the dial-up modem. Like, he's not going to use it. No one will notice if they're gone. Why am I bothering with these wires? Why am I even taking the time? And the real reason is just that I don't want to feel like I've done an incomplete job. That's basically it, but, you know, I get the impression that no one, absolutely no one, would care if I simply didn't put these wires back. Because it won't affect the computer. And, God, how much time have I spent on this? Ten minutes? To thread some wires that won't be used? Yeah. And they uh, put a little more stress on the actual Wi-Fi antenna wires because they're there and sharing the same general area and it's frustrating and annoying and stupid yeah the Wi-Fi wire doesn't want to attach so look at this nonsense such ridiculous nonsense <sighs> just need the Wi-Fi wire to attach Antenna go down, boop, 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 and then go down. All right, let's.
let's do this. Let's pull these other stinking wires out. No, let's not. Okay, I don't have to. The Wi-Fi wire is just a hair too long, actually. Okay, the old Wi-Fi wire is back in. I'm also tired of saying the phrase Wi-Fi wire. I can't get this stuff out. Mm. Oh, that's not good, that's not good. That stuff is stuck in there really bad. Um, I may actually have to, oh, this is caked. This is particularly bad. I don't know what this stuff is but it's not just blowing out. It's not just freely coming off. It's it's caking up the heat sink and I can't get it out normally. I'm gonna go take it to the air compressor and see if I can blast it out. So what do we do now? Well, I can probably eliminate some of these torxes. Now that we're done with them, This will also help me not forget too badly what goes where. See, these computers, they have so many screws holding them together that if you threw half the screws out, you probably would never notice. It's really quite absurd, frankly. Hinge screws, hinge screws. Uh, one of the nice things about this is that since the hinge screws are going through here, that one that I had to repair will not be as big of an issue. It will be held in place by these other hinge screws, which are surprisingly a little bit tight in the, in the slot there. goes here yeah um, I'm actually starting to run out of these and I think I may have lost another screw somewhere so I'm gonna have to look around a little bit and see if I have misplaced one or two or three or four I don't know because there are a couple of torxes I'm not seeing um, I was fairly confident that these were hinge screws, but are these... Oh, okay. Well, that wasn't very helpful, was it? Well, I don't know where those go. Because it's been a little bit. And I just don't know where they go. Um, I am not seeing... Ah, there it is. There's that missing screw. Hello, missing screw. So we can finally get this hinge put back together. Ew. Maybe. That's not... Um, I don't know that that goes to this computer. That looks very different. Yeah, so, uh, no. Just no. Um, where did we go? I have officially lost some screws. What a shock. <sighs> okay. Remember that thing I said about uh, you can just yank some screws and no one will notice? Well, that's what we're going to do. We're going to take some screws and no one's going to notice. Because I need one for this hinge. At an absolute minimum, this hinge must be covered. 
And that's what's going to happen. <sighs> now, let's see. Where's the... There it is. We have these little ones that went in the CD drive area. Go ahead and get those down. So I don't have to think about it ever again. Never want to have to think about it again. Yeah, buddy. Mm. Yep. The same kind of screws also go under the hard drive. And I am left with a one or two here that go under the battery. See, why do you even need the corner screws when you have all these ones that go right here and there and everywhere else to hold it all together? This thing is a giant screw sandwich, and it's really stupid. Like, why is it even put together this way? It's just, it's absolutely ridiculous. 2.5 by 6. So... I think I may have put excessively lengthy screws inside it somewhere. That, that'll that go over well. Oh, that'll go over really well. No, chances are I'll actually never know. But these say by 6, and the others say by 4. And, uh... It's a pretty long screw there, buddy. Pretty sure they were all long like that, though. Actually, that worked. Well, if I can do this, if I can get this Torx here, if I can take the long one out and put the short one here and use the long ones in the other holes that I'm pretty sure they belong in. Yep, yeah, that one's short. That one's not long. Okay, that's where I made my mistakes. So those corners, the corner holes on the front side are not long torxes, they are short torxes. They can take a long torx, but they don't really need to. And then this one is a long torx as well. All right, now, now let's start shoving things back in. Optical drive, easy peasy. Optical drive is held in with one screw here. Optical drive is in. Next, heat sink and fan. The heat sink and the fan kind of sort of go in together. And kind of sort of don't. It's complicated. So what appears to actually happen here is the screw for the fan kind of goes into this clip on the heat sink and it's ridiculous and annoying either way come on come on that is way harder to get in than I think it should be and here's the CPU fan that I said was going to be real hard to poke back in place so we need to Flip these wires over and drop it in place somehow. Oh boy. This is going to be annoying. Maybe I can use my pry tool as a surface to push against to direct it. This wire is so flimsy. It's just, it's amazing how flimsy this wire is. Um, what I realistically need, let's bend it this way, what I really need is pliers that are really small. I almost need tweezers to get it where it needs to go, but there it goes. I do not recommend this. This stinks. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Interesting. Okay. Beautiful. 
we're good to go. Let's get a screw down so that that never comes loose again. Let's get another one down because, you know, we're reassembling a computer. For some strange reason, it seems like screws are important for that. And But maybe I'm biased. Yeah, that's got to be it. I'm just biased. I hope I never have to take that heat sink out. As far as I'm concerned, these numbers here, they're just suggestions. They're not real! <sighs> I wish I could have tested that before reassembly. This thing is not conducive to testing that kind of thing before reassembly. You basically have to put the whole stupid computer back together. And then hope. Hope, hope, hope. That it actually works after you do. Uh, thankfully, the customer has a solid state upgrade, so I won't be waiting too long to find out if I've ruined everything. It's always nice to know that you've failed quickly rather than slowly. Uh, that's not working as well as I'd hoped. But, I'm, yeah, okay, no, I just, I got it, I got it, yeah. Nice. Okay, hard drive's in, heat sink is tightened all around, yeah, 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 pretty sure it is. Um, Wi-Fi antennas are both connected, CMOS battery, CPU fan, uh, speakers... All these connectors are good. I think we are good to flip it over. And, uh... Get the keyboard put back and get the connectors put back. Here we go. Now! New touchpad connector. Good old flat flip lock thing. Yay. Okay, good, 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 good. Uh, let's see, we have a keyboard and a keyboard backlight. This thing is the thing that I said was going to be a pain, but I've already done the work, so it's not a pain anymore. Nice. Um, what does this go to? I don't know what that goes to. I don't think it goes to anything, actually. So, keyboard is underneath all this stuff. Crud. Um, yeah. Keyboard. Hmm. Okay, so we have a keyboard, and said keyboard has one keyboard data cable here that doesn't really want to go in. That's wonderful. Get in there, boy. Get in there. Get in there, boy. Click. Good to go. And then we have another cable, which is the pointing stick. I wonder if that third connector is a backlight connector, and this one just doesn't have a backlight. That's probably what's going on there. Alright. There's the pointing stick that the guy doesn't even use, and therefore I probably didn't even have to hook up. Uh, clickety, clickety, click. Get all the clips to engage. Close it again. Flip it back over. Again and get all these keyboard screws that never really went away to engage the keyboard. Uh, everything with a little picture of a keyboard on it goes to the keyboard. I think there are three, but I'm not sure. There's one, two. Um, no, actually, I don't see a third one anywhere. So, maybe there's not three. Uh, nope, there's one right there. There's three. The third one is hiding way over here, just to confuse you. And I can't put the bottom plate back on in plain view. So let me just snap this. Because the bottom plate has the customer's name on it. That's a thing that I don't want to put in the video. Ah, I tried to steal my shirt. You can't have my shirt, HP, you cunt. Okay. Now, eh, I have a spare torque screw that I don't want. There is one remaining question, and that is, does the battery work? And the answer is, no. No, it doesn't. But anyway, that's the end of the disassembly. So, uh, have fun, because if you're really doing this, I feel bad for you. 
Uh, yeah. HP Elite Book. Uh, they were great computers as long as you didn't have to open them too far. Alright, I'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.